Hi everyone, I'm back in the spray room after this happened. Absolutely awful news, really, really bad news. Gonna set us back at least three or four days. If you wanna find out what I did to mess this job up big time, but stay tuned, this is a big one. second day in we've done the whole day fitting we've loaded up the day before we've got to the job at seven o'clock in the morning we've unloaded we've done the whole day we've got all the units assembled apart from two we've got all the bearers down thinking that we were on a roll doing really really well and then on the way to the job second day I've got a text message show up on my phone because i use my phone as a sat nav on my dashboard it just said kim and there was like a line at the front saying at the top saying oh i'm i'm so sorry so I instantly pulled over, heart started to sink, and I thought, oh, what has happened? Is it game over? Anyway, pulled over in the lay-by, and I have realized that I had sprayed both jobs the wrong colors, so the wrong way round. So the media gym unit wanted to be dark gray, and the library unit wanted to be sky blue, and I've got them around the wrong way. So, yeah, you can imagine absolute distraught so as you can see absolutely awful news i'm back in the spray booth me and sean took the whole day to bring all the components back and they are all here now ready to respray so it's the very next day and luckily rob from amicus the guy who supplies all my paints the 1k high-end vernite paint dropped the paints to me yep he dropped it to me the very same day so i had the paints ready to rock and roll straight away so today is all about getting back on track, starting to respray, loading up my sprayers with the paint that he supplied me with and starting to respray all the components the other way around. So I'm so thankful for Rob to pop the paint around so quickly. I mean, he didn't have to. I could have driven to him. I could have got it delivered, but he decided to bring that paint to me the very same day. So I've got the two paints here. He's also supplied me with some really cool fillers. So anything that I see, any imperfections, any pinheads, this apparently is like butter, this stuff. Perfect if I have any imperfections. So I should be able to put a little bit of this in if I see any tiny imperfections and still get away with one coat. So we've got our new paints here, ready to rock and roll. And they are color coded at the top. As you can see, I've done a few testers over in that corner. We are going for the dark blue. So basically anything that is sky blue is going dark blue. Anything that is dark blue is going sky blue. So they're kind of color coded. I can't get that wrong, can I? I hope. So there we go. We are loading up the dark blue into the sprayer. We've got this one already set up. And if you watched my last video, I mentioned that luckily I hadn't cleaned out my sprayers. So this one's still got the dark blue in and the GX FF in that corner has still got the sky blue in, the light blue. So I'm going to load up the dark blue into this one, just pour the paint straight in. And let me just show you what paint we are actually using. Okay, so you can look in the video description and look at the links and buy this paint yourself. By the way, if you are spraying this paint, which is truly amazing, I'm not just saying that for the sake of the video, I wouldn't lie. It is really, really high end if you're after water-based because you can't use 2K. 2K is smelly, it's two parts. I don't like putting two part paint through my Ella sprayer just in case it dried inside my machine. I can't have the smell where I'm based. Then 1K is for you, it's water based and you will achieve such high end finishes. And the good thing is, is probably cheaper than any paint here. Okay, so all of these tins up here, the Johnstones and the Duluxes, they're 60 quid a tin. This is like for like price wise. So check them out. They are truly amazing. Okay. They really are. The paint is fabulous. These are my best buys for, I don't know, five years of doing finishing. I haven't had such a good product. They are really, really good. I've got the 240 and 320. You'll see me in a moment when I do start spraying again, because that's what we're going to be doing in a moment. I'm going to give you some demos of cleaning up and gonna just be going around the spray room just making sure all my pads are dusted off we're gonna do that together and we're gonna spray a couple together I'll show you how good these are one of these sponges lasted for the entire job okay one for the dark one for the light they go such a long way and they're so cheap check out the sear stuff too I'm gonna to leave links um, for Rob and Casper's 
um, shop, Amicus. Check them out. Seriously, you won't go back, okay? I'm just really excited about their products. So before I start spraying, I don't usually do this, um, but I am on this occasion because we've got quite dark colours. Any overspray that does float around in the spray room, although the fans do a fantastic job, there is a small amount of overspray. So that could eventually lead to sitting on my pipe protectors, these things that you can see behind me. So the plan is just to go over with my hoover and hoover them all off, then hoover the floor. I'm basically minimising how much overspray and how much dust there is in this spray room because I don't want any dust landing in my paint when I'm spraying and it just minimizes that chance that it will do so. so as you can see it's pretty clean and tidy in here. I've got a couple of racks they're not in the right places they need to be moved and I've got the tripod in the way and the bench in the way but other than that it's clean and tidy. You can see where they've gone flat though where I've been stacking them over the years so well, that's the bit that basically I need to hoover. There we go, I'm going to do that to the rest of them. So the next thing I need to do is load up the dark blue paint and put it in the Graco 695. So it's literally empty. Let's pour it in and see how much we get in. Actually pretty close. And get the little bits out at the end. There's not much left to be in there to be honest. Slip that in nice and tight. Get a couple of old gloves and just go around the edges to stop any debris falling in. And to stop any air getting and minimise it going off. Just take precautions. What I'm going to do is show you all the processes I'm going to need to do in order to spray the dark blue, light blue, and the light blue, dark blue. Because there's a little bit of work, it's not just spraying straight away. I need to give them a little tickle for the P240 sanding sponges before we do that. Okay, so we're ready to rock and roll. And all these pieces came back literally the way they went. Perfect. No blemishes, no scratches. We managed to get them there and back, believe it or not without damaging them. I've been advised that I shouldn't just go straight on with a top coat. I should give them a little tickle first with um, some kind of sandpaper. And what I've got here is my trusty CR sponges. I'm going for the fine, the yellow, on that sticker, the 240 to 320. And these things are a godsend. When I've done this before, and I've used just a standard sandpaper, it applies pressure in all different areas it's not uniform as you sand this is perfect plus using the sandpaper for some reason the scratches seem to show through on on the paint sometimes on the next layer these sponges here are just a godsend get these and you will never go back this is the sheen that we've got right now okay i'm going to show you how much of a scratch up we're going to give these in order to put the top coat on so i haven't got a mask on because you won't be able to hear me i've got my two fans on as we speak so i won't be breathing in the dust don't worry and it's just a very light scratch. These pads last forever. So one of these lasted to sand up the primer on the entire sky blue job and on the entire dark blue job. So one each. Absolutely amazing. There we go. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to give a bit more attention to the front edge because I just want to make sure that we get those up nice. A little tickle on the arises. Not a lot. To be honest, I don't really feel like I need to touch those arises. I'm just going to dust off with a brush. I've got my fans on full blow here, so any dust is going to get sucked straight out. To be sure, to be sure, I'm just going to use my air duster with a little with a brush on the ends. There we go, we are ready to spray in my eyes. So it's not ideal that I need to do this to every single component, but you can see the scratch marks now. Very, very slight, but it's enough to ensure that the next layer is gonna stick to the paint. Right, so I'll put the camera as best as I can in the booth. I'm gonna hit the back edge first, and then just work my way forward. There we go, I think that's enough. That should be fine. 
and put it in the rack and let it dry. Okay, so it's in there now. You can see it's on pretty heavy, nice and shiny for now. This is all a 15% sheen, so it's an equivalent to an eggshell that you'll buy off the shelf. Just be aware with the Vernites paint I'm spraying that you want it no less than 15, 14 or 15 degrees, okay? We're at 18, so I'm absolutely fine in here. It's a nice warm day. Okay, so that's had about an hour and a half to dry. Really happy with the outcome. I'm sure that one coat is going to be absolutely fine. I've tried a little scratch test around the edge, around the aris with something sharp, and it's keyed nicely. So I'm happy that one coat at that um, amount of paint, at that thickness, as I'm putting it on, is absolutely fine. Now I'm happy. I've cleaned up. I've done my tests. I can now start the mammoth task of respraying about 100 components. What I'll do to finish the video off, guys, is I'll do one more just to show you how I'm standing up and how I spray. The spraying is quite satisfying seeing it being sprayed. So let's do that together once more and we'll finish the video on that. Doesn't need a lot. to spray. This paint self level so that will be flat as a pancake when it dries. Okay there you go guys that's all I'm going to be doing in this part in this video. But the next one is going to be getting back on track. When I first started installing um, the wardrobe that has gone wrong. Um, I thought I was just going to make one video. So day one, day two, day three, that didn't work out. So I thought, how could I salvage all the filming that I had done? So I thought, okay, well, I'll film the mistake, show you the mistake. Then I'll film bringing it all back. Then I've kind of been freestyling from that point. Today is all about just getting it back to the stage that we were at. And then hopefully the next few parts is going to be back on track and installing once again. So, so if you haven't watched the last two parts, feel free to go back and watch those because this one is basically rectifying a massive mistake, if you didn't know that. And then we're hopefully going to continue this on from loading the van again, getting the customer's house, getting back to where we were with eight units assembled and then carry on assembling. And maybe we may make three days out of it. So there may be another three more videos to come. Um, yeah, so I'm going to crack on. Don't think you want to see me spraying the whole of this because I'm going to be here for about four or five hours, rather you than me. But other than that, guys, hope you've enjoyed. Remember, we've got a membership, so feel free to support the channel because that would be mean a massive amount to help support the channel. Other than that, have a great Friday. Hopefully, I'll see you next Friday. Don't miss it. Take it easy. Ciao for now.